So what I'd like to do is to start off by um, looking at some of the things, specific things that might have been, you know, when we hear presidential speeches and other speeches today, uh, commentators and, and even regular people can see things in them and you think, oh my gosh, they, I see they said that, that's going to be, that's a buzz, you know, that's a buzzword or that's that, there's, there's this kernel of an idea, it's going to keep going forward, I know it's going to be an issue. And so the idea here is um, to partner up um, and to look for, to try to, to articulate We've talked a lot about these, but the theory, the, the sort of um, proposition about the war that Lincoln makes, and then secondly, what the policy is that he's proposing. He makes a statement of a, a proposition of um, what, what, what the war was all about, and then he proposes a policy. Well, no, these two people get along fantastically. This person didn't want to fight the war at all. This person didn't want a war that would disrupt the institution of continents and slavery in the South. Because his livelihood would be... Right, but he could always turn a blind eye to how the cotton was being used. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the theory we're going with is that blame, there's blame to go around, right? Right. And the South is not going to be punished. And I guess that's what I was getting to, like, in order to understand what happens next and why Lincoln's assassination was a tragedy is because we know that Reconstruction went in a, you know, a million different directions. And the war is call these the POV cards, your point of view cards. I want to first ask you, does anybody feel particularly good about what you wrote? Not to show off, but you feel like you could, you'd be willing to share with us either your theory or your policy, and or did it bring up any questions that anybody wants to raise with you? We kind of felt that people in the North um, who really felt that they were sort of fighting to the fight would see this as controversial. What do you mean we share the blame? You know, we don't have slavery. We're trying to preserve the union, and now you're telling us that we're partly to blame. I think maybe that's where mm -hmm. some of the controversy, controversy lies. Interesting. Okay. Yes. We also felt that neither the North, kind of to go on what Nancy said, that neither the North or South is going to be happy with his plan of no blame, and that, you know, he wanted to move quickly, like the South now is going to be forced to join the Union, which they're going to be upset about, and the North is going to be angry that they're not, you know, held as this victorious winner, that he's really got enemies on both sides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some won't accept Southerners, Southerners yep. won't accept Northerners, and a 10% loyalty of which 90% of the population in that Confederate state doesn't want to be there. Did any, uh, and I don't know how much you all got to talk about or you read about in the basement museum, the election of 1864. Um, what, how was Lincoln, what were Lincoln's chances? What, ha what happened? Can anybody sort of revisit that? It depended that? on victory. Yeah. Sure. I'm sorry, say it again. Well, it depended on victory. And, and Military before. victory. So, yeah. yeah, so how was he doing before Sherman started succeeding in the fall? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was so not good. looking good. Um, was it, um, and it was, it was all over. And there are amazing images, again, of what happened in, on the Library of Congress website and in other places, in Atlanta, in Savannah. Um, and uh, at the same time, just remember, um, you know, if he hadn't done that, where would we be? It's a, it's a conundrum. It's a little bit like the conundrum if you, when you investigated of, um, should we have dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima? Well, Grant as well. I mean, Mike was was talking about should Lincoln take the responsibility of the death toll, where if you look at a Sherman or a Grant, their strategy was attrition and just mm -hmm. keep throwing bodies at the problem until they run out of bullets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it, it's there's a lot of controversy of what what the best pra military practice is here. Um, 
we do a play called um, The Road from Appomattox, and it's a meeting between Grant and Lee the day after the surrender, which we know took place. We don't know what happened in it, but we know it took place. Or at least in their memoirs, they both say it took place. And um, one of the things that, um, that Lee says is, this is the last war that will ever be fought according to conventional rules of war as we know them. And I think that was true in many ways. So. Um, what else? What, what else is coming through here in, um, in terms of the controversy of his theory, his controversial theory, or what his proposal was? What is the policy that he's beginning to articulate here? Maybe we can move on to the policy. Yes. The whole malice towards non-charity for all. Mm -hmm. So, so what's he saying there? In his, well, as a, if he were thinking of it from policy terms. Well, it's directed towards the south. We're not going to hang the leadership mm -hmm. like many want them to do up north. Yep. And after four years of hell, it's pretty remarkable mm -hmm. that he would keep that focus on mm -hmm. reuniting the country. Uh, uh, just to repeat myself, is it just directed towards the south, do you think? I mean, what about those Northerners? Stop hating. <laughs> stop, stop looking for revenge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the border states, it was a really big issue. Um, as you begin to look at Andrew Johnson, uh, one of the issues that we come up against with Andrew Johnson is that he was from border state. He had been holding out for four years as a member of the union, as a legislator, a senator from a, from a state that essentially had that had seceded, but he was maintaining his presence, which is why he was named vice president in the 1864 election from a state that essentially had seceded from the Union in Tennessee. He was full of vengeance. He couldn't have been more the opposite of Lincoln. 